In the previous video, we saw how to use inverse transfer technique for the uniform distribution and exponential distribution. Now we look into how the same technique can be used for triangular distribution and um, the variable distribution. Uh, coming to this, uh, the triangle distribution. So once again, the triangle distribution has got the PDF that, okay, f of x equals to x um, uh, zero less than or equal to x uh, less than or equal to one and two minus x if it is one less than x less than or equal to two, otherwise zero. And its CDF is given as follows. So zero if s is less than or equal to zero, x squared by two if x is between uh, zero less than or equal to one, one minus two minus x whole squared by two if x is between one and less than or equal to two, and one if x is greater than two. To apply the inverse transfer technique to generate random variates which follows the triangular distribution, the following steps has to be applied. It is nothing but we need to generate f inverse of r by okay solving the cumulative distribution function in terms of what? In terms of x. The CDF is, so consider the CDF of which one? That is triangular distribution. Now step two, set what? f of x equals to r, your f of x is what? The first case is x squared by two. The second one is one minus two minus x whole square divided by two. Solve x in terms of r. So r equals to what now? x squared by two, fine. In terms of x, if you generate this, it will be x equals square root of two into r. This two can be uh, moved this side. So square, so x equals to which one? Root square, square root of two into r. Consider this as equation one. Consider the second one for the x that uh, lies between one less than or equal to two, one minus two minus x squared divided by two. So r equals to one minus two minus x whole square divided by two. So x equals to, once again, this will be two minus, okay, square root of two of one minus r, right? Now this will be for the second case. Now combining one and two, the equation one and two, so what we'll get, we'll get x equals to square root of two into r if zero less than or equal to r less than or equal to 0 0.5, fine? And two minus square root of two into one minus r if it is 0 0.5 less than or equal to r less than or equal to one because we are going to consider whatever the numbers are within which one now that is zero to one fine so this is how we'll follow the steps for what type of distribution triangular distribution uh, next we'll take up for um, the variable distribution the same technique that is inverse transform technique the variable distribution pdf or uh, variable distribution as pdf okay the pdf is given by using this equation by using um, two parameters where the first one it is called as scale parameter the second one it is called as shape parameter so we have alpha and beta where alpha is called as scale parameter and beta is called as shape parameter now to apply the inverse transfer technique to generate the random variates which follows the variable distribution has to follow the following step now the cdf of the variable distribution is given as it is f of x equals to 1 minus e to the power of minus of x divided by alpha all to the power of beta for x greater than or equal to zero. So this is the CDF for what type of distribution now that is variable distribution. Set f of x equals to r, so which is nothing but one minus e to the power of minus x divided by alpha all to the power of beta. Solve x in terms of r. So if you just solve this in terms of r, we'll get which, what is the formula? We'll get this particular formula so x equals to alpha into minus of log n 1 minus r all to the power of 1 divided by beta fine so these are the steps to be followed for what type of distribution the variable distribution so next we'll consider the same inverse transfer technique for the empirical continuous distribution so whenever we are going to consider the empirical distribution so this empirical distribution it is always uh, based on observation or experience rather than what the theory or pure logic and this empirical distribution can be applied for both continuous as well as discrete and whatever exponential uniform variable and triangular we have considered they are for continuous distribution so empirical continuous distribution once again we will use which technique inverse transfer technique used when theoretical distributions are not 
applicable. Okay, the steps to be followed is same. Collect the empirical data and group them accordingly. Tabulate the frequency and cumulative frequency. The second step to be followed. Now assume the value of the cumulative frequency as a function of empirical data. What is that? F of x equals to r. The steps uh, slightly varies uh, from the steps that we have followed previously for the various types of distribution. Establish a relationship between x and r using linear interpolation. Fine. So this is how we'll be using the formula for which one now for the empirical uh, continuous distribution. So x equals to f inverse of r equals to x i minus 1 plus a i into r minus i minus 1 divided by n where a i is considered as what slope. The value of slope a i is calculated using the formula a i equals to okay x i minus x i minus 1 divided by uh, divided by 1 divided by k. So this is the formula that we need to use for empirical continuous distribution. So let's take up a problem and see, okay, how actually uh, the empirical uh, continuous distribution works. Five observations of five Q response times in minutes to the incoming alarms are given below. 2.76, 1.83, 0.80, 1.45, .80, and 1.24. Generate the random variates for the response time distribution. Given the random number, what is the random number they are given? It is 0 0.71. Fine. So you can see here, okay, consider these um, values. Okay, these are the values. So what they have given here, see here, can collect empirical data and group them accordingly. So this is your empirical data. Then group them accordingly. It is nothing but once again, arrange them in ascending order. So you can see group the empirical data in a sorted manner. After that, the next step you're supposed to do is tabulate the frequency and cumulative frequency. So consider, okay, cal uh, we need to calculate what? Uh, the cumulative frequency and also tabulate the frequency and cumulative frequency. So consider I, so how many values we have? Five. So I value varies from one to five. We need to take the interval. The interval is between, okay, xi minus one, then with what? xi. Fine. So it is always between xi minus 1 less than x less than or equal to xi. So we start with 0. So 0 less than x less than or equal to take the first value that is 0 0.80. Fine. Next take the second one. So starting from which one? 0 0.80. So 0 0.80 less than x less than or equal to 1.24. The next one starts with 1.24 less than x less than or equal to 1.45. The next one starts with 1.45 less than x less than or equal to 1.83. The next one starts with 1.83 less than x less than or equal to 2.76. Fine. Now calculate the frequency. The frequency here is what it is 1 by n. So what is the value of n? The value of n equals to, it is 5. Fine. So 1 divided by n. So it is 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20. 0 .20, so all the values remain the same. Next, the cumulative frequency. How the cumulative frequency is calculated? Either you take high divided by n or this one 0 0.20. This add with the previous one, it will be 0 0.40. This add, add with 0 0.40, it will be 0 0.60. 0 0.0 add with uh, 0 0.80, we'll get 1. Otherwise, you take i divided by n, i is 1. 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.20. 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.40 and so on. You'll get the answer. Using this value, calculate the slope value. What is the slope value? Ai equals to xi minus xi minus 1 divided by 1 divided by n. For it is 1, we need to calculate. For AI, we need to calculate. Okay, using this formula, fine, calculate, you will get these values. Fine, you have to calculate those values. Then after that, coming to the step 3, fine. So first time the XI value, XI value will be 0. When, okay, when um, A1, fine, so we have X1 minus x1 minus 1 is 0 divided by 1 divided by m is how much it is always frequency is how much 0 0.20 fine for this value for the first one ai xi is 0 0.80 so this will be 0 0.80 
minus x naught is this is x i minus one. X naught is how much? Zero. So it is zero divided by zero point two zero. You will get the answer as four. In the similar way, calculate the slope for a one, a two, a three, and a four and a five. Next, f of x equals to r. So that is what um, we are going to calculate. F of x equals to r. It is nothing but we need to just set the value. Then once again evaluate. Okay, in terms of which one now? That is in terms of which one? That is x. Now take this formula. X equals to f inverse of r, which equals equal to x i minus one plus a i of r minus i minus one divided by n. So we'll calculate just for x one in the similar way you can calculate for x two, x three, and so on. Given r one is zero point seven one lies in fine. I need to calculate the value. Given r one that is zero point seven one lies in the interval that is okay zero point seven one. Can you take the interval here zero point seven one? It is between these two. Correct. So this is interval is nothing but i value is three divided by five. Then once again i value is four divided by five. So that is what the interval they have considered here. So x one equals to x of fine. So here I need to consider uh, x of i minus one by n. So it is nothing but four minus one plus fine a four fine of R one minus four minus one by n. Once again, just evaluate it. We'll get x one equals to one point six six because the interval is between three by five equals to zero point six zero and four by five, which is equal to zero point eight zero. So here, the value of i am going to consider is how much now? That is four because it is between these two interval and this value is nearer to zero point eight zero. So here, use the formula. Which one? This formula. So it is x i four minus one plus a four of r minus four minus one divided by n. So we are getting this answer. Suppose they are given one more random variable r. Okay. Then once again take that random variable. Check within which interval it is lying. Once again take it and evaluate it and calculate the next value. And this procedure will be followed to generate what the random uh, variate sub. for empirical continuous distribution